Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Social Contract, a Commander podcast. I'm Mike Almond, and joining me is my co-host, Alex Lapp. Alex, what's up, man? Not too much, Mike, uh, but for now, choose one. Either we talk about modal spells or we talk about modal commanders. Ooh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to do both. Oh, awesome. B- but we're going to do one of them now. So, uh, yeah, everybody, this is where we want to talk about uh, paralysis of choice. <laughs> As we're going to have a whole lot of options and a whole lot of cards that we want to target that specifically give you decisions to make. Uh, as you're actually casting them. Um, So we're going to start with some of the modal spells, Mm -hmm. and we're going to go into the modal commanders uh, following our break here. Now, Alex, modal spells, um, can you you go through them a little bit with me as far as the judge's corner segment? So this means that you can choose sometimes one option, sometimes more than one option, and then do they resolve how you see fit? How, How does a modal spell work? All right, Mike. So choosing the modes of the spell is actually strictly built into the actual step-by-step process of casting a spell. Okay. So let's walk through those. We're going to go real quick because this is not a this isn't a crash course. We're just doing sure. the, the highlights here. So when we're casting a spell, we have these specific steps. Uh, first, we're going to move the spell to the stack. All right. Then, right after that, Mike. Then we're choosing the modes. This is the second step of casting the spell. So if it says choose one, choose one or more, you're going to choose those. If you have a splice, buyback, kicker, uh, choose a value for X if it's an X spell. This is where you're making all of your choices. Hybrid mana, you're going to choose what kind of uh, color of mana it's going to be. If I have Rexian mana, you're going to choose whether it's going to be life or mana. Mm -hmm. I know all of this kind of happens all at the same time for most players, but there is a strict rule set, and and this does happen very early. Um, After that... We're going to pick our targets, if the spell has any. Um, and this isn't choose. Like, right, there are a lot of choose effects, but sure. this is specifically, if it says the word target, this is where you pick the targets. After that, uh, we're going to have dividing and distributing. If it says divide damage or distribute any number of counters, that kind of thing, we're going to choose those. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and check if the spell can be cast legally based on all those choices we just made. Then we're going to add up all the total cost of the spell, which is the base mana cost plus the value you chose for X plus uh, maybe you chose, you know, black instead of paying two if it's Beseech the Queen or uh, or the Scarecrow. You're just going to add all the numbers together. You're going to add any taxes. You're going to reduce by any def- uh, any cost reductions. Mm-hmm. And then... <laughs> Trinosphere, if it exists, is going to check to make sure that the total is at least three. If not, it becomes three. And then after that, you're going to pay everything. So that's the rundown. That's the crash course. Modal spells, okay. Mike, are, are you're choosing those modes basically the moment you start casting the spell. It right. happens before targets, which is interesting. Um, and huh. that's really because certain modes will have targets and certain ones won't. So that wouldn't be really appropriate to choose targets if you're not even going to choose that mode, right? So... Can somebody respond to you choosing a target during the spell, or do they have to do that before the spell? No. So what I'm describing is the process of casting a spell. Once Uh you begin casting a spell, once you put it on the stack, you're going to do every single one of those steps. You choose everything, determine the cost, pay for everything. All of that happens. Then triggered abilities go on the stack. Then priority happens. It comes back to you, and then you pass it to the next player. And then once priority is all done, triggered abilities resolve, spell resolves. Um, people cannot respond during the casting or resolution of the spell, Mike. Fair enough. Well, then why don't we talk about some of these spells? And Let's the do fact it. that a lot of people can't uh, might not know that they can't respond to it during. They have to respond to triggers and stuff. And wow, okay. So right. that makes some of these... like even a little bit more insane than I thought. Uh, I mean, we start with the big one here, right? Like, we start with Boros Charm. Okay. Right? Boros Charm is phenomenal. It's so good. Because here's the thing. This is a one red, one white instant that says choose one. Boros Charm deals four damage to target player or Prainswalker. Okay. That's not bad, I guess. Yeah. Uh, permanence you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Uh, ding, 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 ding. That's, That's the one, very Mike. Good. That's well, it right there. And here's the other one. Target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Not terrible. 
Not terrible. Not so terrible. here's the thing. If the worst case scenario is that it is a two mana remove target thing that's going to be a problem as far as mm -hmm. a planeswalker, okay. That's not bad. But giving something double strike as combat tricks, that's not something that we do a lot. Give anything in. double strike. But yes, giving any creature double strike until end of turn is mm -hmm. that's a nice little way to okay. sneak in a but win. But this somehow. this is going to be an ongoing theme, right? Yeah. So for a modal spell, yeah. you're going to have this thing where either most of the modes are going to be some questionable utility, sure. Let's say diplomatically, or uh, the costs are going to be higher for mm -hmm. the modes that you expect. So like. Permanence you control, gain indestructible until end of turn. That's a two mana effect. So this is That's not a good, good. example. <laughs> this is not a good example for that. No. But as we go on, you'll see that modal spells tend to cost a little more or do a little less for their mana value because mm -hmm. you have that flexibility, Mike. Right. No, and and that's why Boros Charm is in here, and it is the yeah. highest played card. If Boros Charm about. only had the permanence indestructible mode it would still see 99% of the same amount of play that it yep. currently sees. It's in there for a very specific reason, and the yeah. reason is, no, all of my stuff is indestructible at instant speed. And you can use that offensively or defensively. That can yep. be a combat trick. It's very good. Uh, Boros Charm is a very good Phenomenal. card. That's why we started with it. This uh, is probably the best Boros instant in the game. I can't think of a like better Sunforger one Like, Sunforger my head. goes to find this, right, Mike? Yeah. Like, this is yeah. the one you find. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's another red instant that is extremely popular in our format, but even more popular in other formats, Mike. And that's Red Elemental Blast. This one is old school. It is. And yeah. even with it, not far behind it is Pyroblast. Right. Those are two of the same. They do the same stuff. Yeah. And that's a color hoser. Red Elemental Blast. Red instant. Choose one. Number one, counter target blue spell. Number two. Destroy target blue permanent. That, mm, that's a good rate, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, this this is another one of those, red's not supposed to counter things unless it's weird. Unless and it's blue. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 I'm surprised that it's this high on the list. And I, is this more of a CEDH thing or do you see red elemental blast and pyroblast in regular games. You know, I really don't, but if you're in a mono red deck, Mike, this is probably the best that makes sense. control spell in your deck other than Chaos Warp. Yeah. Like, okay. destroy target blue permanent for a single mana or counter target blue spell. Mike, the best spell in the game is a blue spell. Yeah. This counters Psych Rift for one mana. Right. That's all I got to say about that. Now, That's there's another good. red spell, and this is another charm. This is... There really aren't that many charms that see a lot of play in EDH, mm -hmm. but Boros Charm's the big one. And then yes. right after Boros Charm, you got Rakdos Charm. Yeah. For the exact opposite reason that you play Boros Charm. Mm -hmm. So Rakdos Charm, black, red for an instant that says, choose one, exile all cards from target player's graveyard, mm -hmm. destroy target artifact, or each creature deals one damage to its controller. Hello. Yeah. Each creature... Deals one damage to its controller. That high token decks. That is not a common effect at no. all. At all. No, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, it's, and it's the other two modes are extremely playable. Oh, for sure. A, a two mana destroy target artifact. I mean, that gets play. Yes. <laughs> Exile all cards from target player's graveyard. Okay. Would you like to make one person totally ruin their strategy? Somebody also cast Rise of the Dark Realms. Uh, yep. Well, I was going to. Make them take a bunch of damage, but I could just make that spell whiff. Yeah. Yeah, no, Rakdos Charm. These are the two good charms. I, I like how you phrased that. The, the rest of them don't get a ton. Yeah. They of... really don't. Now, yeah. the charms in, in other formats, uh, like in Standard, when they were in Standard, sure. these charms saw a lot of play in Standard, um, mm -hmm. simply because they're modal. But a lot of them are like spot removal or like removes a creature deal some damage like not all of them are anywhere near as as flexible as as these two, oh yeah or as applicable to our format um but mike let's talk a little bit about each creature deals one damage to its controller yes please. this is this is very interesting because it doesn't say rakdos charm deals one damage 
to target player or each player for each creature they control. Nope. The creatures are the ones dealing the damage. And that means that abilities the creatures have are relevant. Abilities like infect. Mm -hmm. Abilities like lifelink. Mm Lifelink will make this basically do nothing. In fact, we'll make them lose the game if there is more creatures. There has never been a more fun thing that I've done in Magic as far as a salty thing than casting Rakdos Charm right after somebody did their Triumph of the Hordes. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that is dirty. Oh, well, see, they were. I, I asked them who they were going to kill, and they said, well, it's definitely going to be player B, and uh-huh. also I'm deciding between player A and you. And I was like, well, yeah, that's I'll not let the you answer know. you want to hear. I was like, well, if you if you are going to kill me, you're going to lose the game. And I think just because of that, they were kind of curious of what I had in hand. So they uh-huh. they, they they called my bluff. And unfortunately, it was not a bluff. <laughs> so <laughs> Rack this Charm. Very good. Big That's fan. The last time they called your bluff. All right. So we've talked about these charms. Let's talk yes. about something that is really relevant to EDH, Mike. Let's talk about modal board wipes yeah there's a lot <laughs> yeah so mike let's start with austere command this yeah. is an extremely flexible board wipe oh for it's sure. basically build your own board wipe let's read this here austere command for white white for a sorcery choose two mm-hmm. option one destroy all artifacts number two destroy all enchantments That's number three destroy all creatures mana value three or less Okay. And destroy, uh, number four is destroy all creatures mana value four or more. So, Mike, Ooh. you can specifically craft your choices to make it so that this board wipe is as asymmetric as possible. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is phenomenal. Yeah, this is a, this is really good in any deck where you've got a pretty good theme going. Mm-hmm. You can target all of the things that aren't your theme. Yeah. Most of the time when we're talking about board wipes, it's, you know what? I may or may not like the situation my board state is in, but I need to get rid of the board state as a whole. Whereas Austere Command, I'm going to keep my stuff nine mm-hmm. times out of ten. Absolutely. <laughs> and that could be... It's its rare that you get to use board wipes offensively. And this is one of those examples, and I'm a big fan of it. Yeah. The fact that you can re-sculpt the entire board... Yep. Makes it so that, you know, it's a six mana sorcery, but this is extremely playable. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The The idea of I'm going to destroy all artifacts and creatures with uh, mana value four or greater mm-hmm. in a tokens deck. Yeah. Where you've got a lot of anthems out. Things like that. It's the to play around with it. It's There's a reason that this spell is played as often as it is. And tokens that are created but aren't copies, have mana value zero. Correct. And that is a good way to keep them around. Or get rid of them all if you're not the one playing tokens. Now, Mike, there's a very similar spell to this. Very similar. It costs one less, Cleansing Nova. Mm -hmm. It's almost the same spell. But at the cost of being a little cheaper, you get a little bit less control. And for that reason, I actually don't like this one as much. Cleansing Nova, Mike, tell us about it. So with that, it's three generic and white, white. So five mana spell with a sorcery that says, choose one, destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So there's not as much flexibility. Admittedly, Mm -hmm. there are going to be times where austere command is played and the modes that you choose are destroy all artifacts and destroy all enchantments. Definitely. Destroy all creatures, mana value three or less and destroy all creatures, mana value four or greater. It totally happens. That'll happen. But... The ability to do whatever suits the actual board state that you're building or whatever you're mm-hmm. looking at versus being stuck in one scenario or the other, totally different. Now, don't get me wrong. I can appreciate the fact that this is one mana cheaper. That makes oh, a sure. difference. But the amount of flexibility you gain with Austere Command for that one extra mana, that makes me want to play it a lot more than Cleansing Nova, personally. Mm-hmm. I get that. And then, I mean, the other one that if we're bringing up board wipes, the other one that we need to bring up here is Merciless Eviction. Uh, yes, please. Because, because uh, another six mana value spell for generic white, black. Yeah. Uh, the big difference here, choosing one, exile all, all artifacts, exile all creatures, exile all enchantments, exile all planeswalkers. 
exile thing is an effect that you're willing to play a little bit of a uh, you're willing to pay a little bit of a premium for because that gets around a whole lot of nonsense that you normally can't right but this <laughs> i only wish this was for double white but this is for white black so right. you got to be in at least an orzov deck but if yep. you are this is probably your best board wipe oh yeah because at that there is nothing that gets around it it's yeah it's, no it's exiled it's gone bye yeah, your host no reanimation for you now mike if we're talking about board wipes mm -hmm. we have to talk about one of the most famous board wipes that has one of the silliest modes now Ristic Studies, Sam the Magic Man, has a video about this card. Okay. And that card is Crux of Fate. Yeah. Crux of Fate is the story spotlight card, basically, for the Cons of Tarkir story. Mm -hmm. And that is three, black, black, first sorcery, choose one. Destroy all dragon creatures or destroy all non-dragon creatures. Now, you don't need to be in a dragon deck to use this spell because there's not that many black board wipes. Right. But if you are in a dragon deck, this is the best spell in your deck. <laughs> That's true. Very true. silly. It's, I mean, imagine if there were, imagine if white had a destroy all non-soldier creatures oh, or yeah. destroy all soldier oh, yeah. creatures. Like this is one of those things that, yeah, you're right. If, if you're in mono black, this is a very good board wipe. Absolutely. And if you're in a dragon's deck, this is amazing. When the absolute worst case scenario is it's still really, really good as far as mm -hmm. a mana value, as far as the what it can do for you. Mm -hmm. Great. I've got no problem with that. Crux of Fate is a fun one. I see a ton of players that are not in dragon decks. They just run this because as it's a should. five mana board wipe in black. Yep. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Um, let's... Let's go ahead and move off of full-fledged board wipes here. Okay. And I want to talk about one of my favorite cards as far as the variability that you get with it. Okay. Which is weird because it's only got two options. Um, I love Return of the Wild Speaker so much. Do you? <laughs> I really do. Because it's an instant for four generic and a green. And you get to choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. Or non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. That's actually not bad. I haven't it's, really given this card a fair look. It's it's not bad, because here's the thing. If you're playing a deck that gets out a lot of non-human tokens, five mana overrun mm -hmm. is pretty solid. At well, instance. there's no trample. Careful. There's no trample. But five mana, buff the squad as you're attacking at instant speed. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. The idea of drawing cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, it's real easy to have a seven power creature in green with five mana. This isn't bad, Mike, but I feel like I would play Rishkar's expertise over this. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. But the idea of being able to turn something into... Uh, one of the big ones that I play this with is in my uh, Frey Elise uh, Planeswalker command okay, deck. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that is a deck that makes the other elves all get bigger pretty fast. And worst case scenario, if it turns into a... Oh, I'm going to swing. By the way, all of these elves are getting plus three, plus three. That ends people. Because that is a deck all about literal elf ball. Just rolling the ball down the hill, getting as many elves as possible that buff the other elves and right, do everything along right. those lines. So it's it's one of the more fun ones for me, specifically because of the instant speed. I like the, nope, the wild speaker's back. And do I want to draw nine cards or do I want to pump the team as I'm swinging? Hmm. And either way, usually pretty fun. Interesting. Um, let's talk about another one that's just an infamous card, Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command is one and triple blue for four mana, an instant choose two. You have counter target spell, second option, return target permanent to its owner's hand, mm -hmm. third option, 
tap all creatures your opponents control. Oof. Fourth option, draw a card. That those are four pretty decent options, Mike. They really are. Um, here's the thing. I love this card as far as a. When I look at it, and it's a, I, I look at it as a four mana counter spell and a thing. Yeah, you because, could counter spell and cantrip. You could counter spell and tap everything. Yeah, because the thing is, I don't. I, maybe I just haven't been in that situation where I've had this in my hand several times mm -hmm. and went, you know what? Returning a permanent to their to its owner's hand and drawing a card would be good here. Right. But I can get more. I can do more. <laughs> and I've I've actually I've fallen into a trap with it. I can think about two separate times where I was waiting for the right moment for Cryptic Command, but that just might be me having a counter spell that I never have. I don't play a lot of counters and going, aha, I shall get all of the value. When really I should just do the other modes of this card from time to time. Because mm -hmm. tap all creatures your opponents control, that that is a player removal slash win the game type yeah, of option. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Places. Like, like yeah. if you're ready to win the game and you're just sitting on your alpha strike because mm -hmm. you can't go until next turn and somebody is going to board wipe, you could do a lot worse than Cryptic Command, counter the oh, spell, yeah. and then tap everything down. And For on sure. your turn, you're guaranteed the win. Its best case scenario is awesome. And its worst case scenario is better than I've given it credit for over time. So this is one of those cards that I always liked. I think I just need to reevaluate it and bump it up a little right. bit my own my own right. personal uh, requirements. Now, there's another uh, spot removal one that was uh, printed a couple of years ago here. Crush Contraband. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is kind of replaced... Uh, turn to dust. Yeah. Crush contraband three and a white for an instant. Choose one or both. Exile target artifact. Exile target enchantment. Now, there are definitely times, because return to dust is the same thing for two double white, except it's a sorcery, and it says, or it's an instant, excuse me. It's an instant, but if you cast it on your main phase, on your turn, mm -hmm. then you get both. And with that, you can hit two artifacts or two enchantments. With this one, it's an instant, and you always get two, even on other players' turns, but it has to be an artifact and an enchantment. Right. And I don't think that there's a ton of times where I've gone, I need to remove two things. And... I've had issue because they're both artifacts or they're both enchantments. Like Crush well, Contraband funny. has been... Crush Contraband has been something fine for me. You know? It's funny. Like, I've... Mm -hmm. Because Crush Contraband always makes me think of Return to Dust, mm -hmm. I can remember on, like, three or four specific occasions where I'm like, <laughs> wow, I wish I could hit double artifacts right now. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, just, the value is always there. You're always getting two things exiled. They're never, ever coming back. Sure. It's it's good spot removal. It is. It is. I I I've got no complaints with Crush Contraband. It it's it's a good spell. I I like being able to get rid of things that are stopping me from winning the game slash playing the game, and anything that does that and gives me options to do it more than once. Great, no problem. Speaking of winning the right. game, Mike, uh, got one here. Yeah. That uh, almost guarantees you to win the game. How about Tooth and Nail? Yeah, you want to read this one? Yeah, so Tooth and Nail, five generic, green, green for a sorcery that says, choose one. Search your library for up to two creature cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Or, put up to two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. However, this spell also has Entwine for two generic, which says you choose both if you pay the Entwine cost. Yeah, so incredible. really, Tooth and Nail, um, it's let, let's be real, it's a nine cost spell. <laughs> yeah, there's this, very, this is the green expropriate. Yeah, there's a yeah. very there's a very limited amount of times where you're going to cast this and not entwine it oh, unless yeah. you're literally looking at the two cards that you would get. Sure, if you have like already. a fat hand, you could get away with casting just the second mode, but right. I would never cast just the first mode. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, it's it's this this wins games. It, it wins, wins games, games, and it's it's rough, but. It's nine mana sorcery. Like it's, it's gonna win you the game. Sorcery. Yeah, that, I mean that's just kind of how it goes. Uh, right. I do. I do like it. I'll, it's a I'll very admit, green win con. 
it's a very green wind con. <laughs> this is this is the um, I'm gonna find Crater Hoof and something else to go with Crater Hoof kind of win con. Yeah. That's what you're looking for at that point. Right, pretty much. Um Tooth and Nail is very good. I'll tell you what, do you want to go ahead and hit because it's such a commander spellbook staple, uh, why don't you talk to us about retreat to Coral Helm? Yeah, Mike. Uh Retreat to Coral Helm is kind of a inside joke at the Commander Spellbook website and community because mm-hmm. It's so combo-tastic that there are at least 1,000 combos we have with this card. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. Uh, <laughs> return to Coral Helm, two and a blue for an enchantment with landfall. Whenever a land ETBs under your control, choose one. First option, and this is the big one, you may tap or untap target creature. So gross. Second option, scry one. Now, Mike, there are so, so many creatures the combo with this card. I'm not mm-hmm. even going to start listing them because you can just go on commanderspellbook.com, type in Retreat to Coral Helm, and you will be inundated with hundreds upon hundreds of combos with this card. Suffice to say, you're going to choose the top mode, bottom mode of Scry 1. Mm-hmm. And if you have, even if you don't have a combo, even if you don't have a combo, Mike, with mana dorks, this is pure value. Yep. With any creature that has a high value activated ability that you want to be doing more than once a turn. Phenomenal. Sure. It's just and it's a it's an uncommon, it's 81 cents. Yep. Like I think that any any blue deck that has a bunch of creatures with activated abilities that require tapping, this card just goes right in. And again, it's one of those things where it's when I'm looking at modal kind of spells. Yeah. I like to think, okay, here's the absolute peak. That's awesome. You want a mode that's always going to work, right? Always going to work. Yeah. And scry, scry one always one works. Is really good. It's always going to work, even if your board is empty. It works. And that's. It's rare that you get something, okay, this is an enchantment landfall. Okay, great. We're going to deal with this. It's going to be cool the entire time. I'm always going to have value. There's a couple of things that you can do with that. But this is really cool all on its own. Worst case scenario, okay, I don't have a whole lot of value on tapping on tapping a a creature. Uh, All right, great. I'll scry one. I'm just going to make sure I'm getting the draws I want for the rest of the game. You know, Mike, there's another another retreat card that Mm -hmm. just very recently got printed in Zendikar Rising that is... Immediately, incredibly popular. It's so good. Tell me about Felidar Retreat. It's so good. It's got uh, cats on it. This is my favorite card uh, that we're going to talk about today, just Let's so you it. know. Uh, so this is three generic and a white for a, an enchantment that says Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token or put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. That's nutty. Yeah. This is, if you are in a white token go wide deck, this is a good card. Even if you're not like if if you're, if the idea of, if you're going to play something on, okay, great. Play a land. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, make a blocker. Best case scenario, pump up the team, give things vigilance, move on. Landfall like, Neca token is extremely solid, but the fact really that you, is. later in the game, when one token is meaningless, you can just pump your whole board and it all gains vigilance, you mm-hmm. can just swing in without committing anything. Yeah. No, it's... it's. I love cards that build off of each other. And this is one of those cards where by itself, it says, hey, I'm going to help you assemble a squad and also pump up said squad. <laughs> Now, Mike, I, can we can it. we talk about the discrepancy in the artwork between the cats that I see on the card filled our retreat? Mm-hmm. Uh, the one on the left just looks kind of like maybe a little scared, a little cute. Then you see some like playing in the background. Now let's go look at the cat beast token from uh, tokens from Zendikar mm-hmm. Rising. Sure. That is ferocious. It yeah. looks like I'm about to get mauled to death. Well, I would like to assume that that cat beast token is the one that has received many, many plus one counters. Okay, but it's still a 2-2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I, we, 
we we suspend the, our our reality in disbelief when we have to at certain points. I'm just I don't know. You're right. That thing is way bigger and scarier. Whereas the ones on the actual card itself, you know, they're more frolicky and curious. All that good stuff. Now, Mike, this uh, this card I'm about to say here caused a bit of a stir when it got printed in Modern Horizons mm -hmm. because it's very similar to Cryptic Command. It has the kind of value that you're that you're looking for in a modal spell. Archmage's mm -hmm. Charm, it's okay. a triple blue, three mana. It's an instant. Choose one. First option, counter target spell. Sure. Second option, target player draws two cards. Okay. Third option, gain control of target non-land permanent, mana value one or less. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Mike, this is a very... It This just has variety written all over it. I mean, I read that as pay a little bit more for a counter spell. Right. But that's fine. Like, that's not ideal, but that's spells. this. we talked about this. Yeah. You're going to spend a little bit more to yes. get any given mode because the benefit is you have more than one mode. Right. Uh, draw two cards for three mana. Eh. I mean, it, instant, so that's that's not terrible. Um, or gain control of target uh, soul ring. <laughs> that's what I that's what or I like to read. Any fast mana rock. Mana sure. crypt, mana vault. Yep. Yep. All of them. Yep. Uh, um, Mox Opal. Good good job, Archimage Scarm. <laughs> it's the these are this is why we like the modal spells. We like options. We like yeah, it, it, we're not gonna pay we're gonna pay a premium sometimes for the ability to have choice, right? And this is a the, you're you're right. This did why why did this get like the whoa when it came out? Well, I feel like in modern because modern doesn't have counterspell straight mm -hmm. up. Um, I think modern horizons two that is just starting to get spoiled. Yep, is going to have like a, just a total bomb of a counterspell or it just sure. has counterspell. I forget which. Um, but the fact of the matter is that. Counter spells in modern are not like a soft thing. There's always the option that a more interesting or better value counter spell is going to get printed. And spending one more mana for a counter spell is not terrible when your other option is steal anything off their board that's one mana or less, mm -hmm. or worst case scenario, you draw two cards. Like it's this is just it has a very high floor. Yeah. Would I pay one more mana to counter a spell or draw two cards more times than not i I'd, I'd be willing to you know i'd be willing to put that into my deck and the just three mana take control of target soul ring mana crypt like I, all of the zero to one cost mana rocks to set you up for the rest of the game while also hindering somebody else's plans i i love that now, we have one more in this family of blue mana instant speed spells mm -hmm. where you just have a smorgasbord of value. Yeah. How about a Sublime Epiphany? This is the one I was hoping we were talking about. Okay. So, I, so, I, I love this card. Sublime Epiphany has five options. Four blue mm -hmm. blue for an instant. Choose one or more. There it is. <laughs> counter target spell or counter target activated or triggered ability. The two great options right there. Mm -hmm. Or return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Or create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Yep. Or target player draws a card. Mike, this is... It's six mana, but you're getting just the whole enchilada as far let's, as value is concerned. Yeah, let's be real. More times than not, this is a six mana counter, bounce, clone, and draw. Yeah. You're just, you're sitting with six mana up. Maybe you have this, maybe you have Psych Rift, but whoever puts out the spell that is, that you're going to counter, mm -hmm. like you're just going to explode with value the moment that happens. You're yep. going to bounce their stuff. The spell gets countered. Maybe a triggered ability happened when they cast it. That gets countered too. How about Mike? How about Storm? Oh gosh. Yeah. Because you counter the spell and you counter the Storm trigger. Goodbye. That's pretty good. See, and... I was sitting here thinking, the reason that I like this card as much as I do is because there's almost 
say somebody doesn't play their awesome spell that you were waiting on. You're holding mm-hmm. up this counter. All right, great. I'm going to get so much value. No one plays a spell that's worth Yeah, countering. that'll happen a lot. Target Countering target activated or triggered ability? There's so many things on the battlefield at any given moment that have these activated triggered ability. The stifle effect. Yeah. And you got to keep in mind, okay. that's that's fetch lands. Ooh. That's planeswalker Ooh. activated loyalty abilities. So good. Yeah, that's... I, like, I so have, this... Good. This is like one of those spells that... If you were to cast it against my Emrakul deck, I mm-hmm. would just it would it would hose it for for the yeah. time being because you would counter Emrakul. But usually the problem with countering Emrakul is you still get mind slaved. Not with right. this card, you're countering everything. Yeah. You're countering this the creature and the mind slave, and you're going to bounce one of my artifacts back to my hand, and you're going to make a token that's a copy of a creature you control. Like it's it's six mana. And you're holding it up a lot, but if there's one color that can afford to hold up six mana, it's blue. The the specific encounter that made me go, I like this card, but now I think I love it, was me playing my Marin deck. And my Marin deck, uh, Marin has a triggered ability at end step. And being able to say, okay, cool, I'm going to combo off with this a little bit, and I'm going to basically outvalue everybody. Mm-hmm. And them saying, no, actually, I'm going to counter that. I'm going to return Marin to your hand. I'm going to copy this thing that I have, and I'm going to draw a card. And me going, well, that was a lot. Dang. This is a really cool card. Let's talk about one more here, and, and then after that we can uh, go yeah. to Commanders. How about? So there is a third charm. Mm-hmm. Now, this doesn't see anywhere near as much play. Uh, of the 10 charms, but at a distant third, we got Golgari Charm. Okay. Golgari Charm, black green, two mana, instant. Choose one. Number one, all creatures get neg one, negative one until end of turn. Mm-hmm. So minus one, minus one to all creatures until end of turn. That's going to, just like Rakdos Charm, token decks are done. Yep. Uh, just for a target enchantment. Okay. Not bad. But then you have the third option regenerate each creature you control. Now, Ooh, we'd like that. This isn't. Anywhere near as good as Boros Charm. However, no. this doesn't go in Boros decks. No. Now, Heroic <laughs> Intervention is a very expensive card. Mm-hmm. We all want to be playing Heroic Intervention. But that card costs money, I assume. Let's find out how much that costs right now. I want to say, it, with the reprint, I think it's around... I think it's cheaper, but I don't think it's a lot cheaper. Okay. Heroic Intervention right now is $11. There you go. Okay. This card is 75 cents. Yep. So it's not going to save you every time. No. However, we've talked about this before. There are a large number of board wipes, most of them actually, that they destroy the board, but they don't say can't be regenerated. Some of them do. Most don't. Most don't. And this isn't just for board wipes. It's also for spot removal. Yep. Uh, It's one of those things. Again, the reason that you have these in there and you have these these modal cards, isn't because, it isn't necessarily because they are bombs in every way, shape, and form. Oh, yeah. They are flexible, and because they are flexible, they're going to help you in a lot of situations. Golgari Charm, as a card, isn't, it isn't amazing. Yeah. But you may not be excited is, about this episode. It's not very splashy, is it? But, well, we're going to get in. We, we started with some splash, and we're going to get into some <laughs> splash as far as commanders in a second here. But oh, yeah. here's the point. Golgari Charm, at its worst, is useful. Because two mana destroy target enchantment is often the going rate for destroying an enchantment. It just doesn't have the destroy target enchantment. It's a little more. Destroy target artifacts. enchantment is one mana. Well, right. But not all the time. Because you don't have a thousand cards that say that it could do that. And again, am I willing to pay a premium to destroy target enchantment? Or... On a moto spell, yeah. Yes, yeah. and it, and that's that's where I'm at. I, the idea of saving myself because I'm going to take seven power off the board or kill a bunch of tokens or keep my creatures on the board after a board wipe, it's effective. And I, I, I do kind of just want to make a, a deck that is just all the choice and i think if we're going to do that we're going to have to talk about some commanders that also make a lot of choices good call mike so with that uh we're going to take a quick break 
And we're going to come back, talk to you about some of the commanders that have so many lines of text and things that they can do. We'll be right back. Okay, Alex, we yeah. got to talk about the cards that can be your commander that also do all of the things. So, all right. Let's talk about some commanders that do a lot of stuff. Why don't you go ahead and start us off? Sure, Mike. Um, I'm going to pick this one, not necessarily because it's the best or coolest one, but because it needed errata for a very funny reason. Uh, Marath, Will of the Wild. Mm -hmm. This was in Commander 2013. It's red, green, white for a legendary okay. creature, elemental beast. Marath, Will of the Wild, enters the battlefield with a number of plus one, plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana spent to cast it. This is an excellent clause for a commander to have. Because no matter how many times you cast it for additional mana, cumulative up, uh, not cumulative upkeep, excuse me, commander tax, mm -hmm. as it increases, Marath, Will of the Wild gains more counters. So you're always yep. going to get some money's worth. Now, Marath has activated ability. Pay X and remove X plus one, plus one counters from Marath. X can't be zero. Choose one. Put X plus one plus one counters on target creature. Mm -hmm. Or Marath deals X damage to any target. Or create an XX green elemental creature token. Okay. Three interesting options. Now, Mike, the reason I chose... The, oh, this is a zero, zero. Excuse me. Oh. Uh, the reason that I chose Marath was because it needed functional errata. If you look at the card... You'll notice the part where I said X can't be zero is not on there. Yeah. And that is a huge problem sure because is. if Marath is out and that clause isn't on the card, I can pay zero mana to create a zero, zero green elemental creature token, which uh -huh. then dies due to state-based actions and gets me a death trigger. And uh -huh. if I just pack my deck full of things that report me when things die, I can go infinite instantaneously. You can do that. You can have an anthem out that gives all your creatures plus one. Oh plus yeah, one an and anthem would an do infinite it. Infinite amount of stuff. Uh, yep. Yeah. No. This. There's. There. I. I've seen this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I. I it, yes, it's it got not how it works. Reasons. It. It got errata, because they forgot. Yeah. X can't be zero. To their. That's credit, why I chose this one. Right. To their credit, when a card has eight lines of of actual text mm -hmm. on it. I, I, you know what? Sometimes you're going to miss something. Yeah. <laughs> Wrath is very good. Um, I would like to move to uh, Bear Force 1 over here. With All right. Queen Among Bears. Uh, this is, well, it's a bear. So it is one She's generic a and a green for a legendary creature, Bear, and is a 2-2 two -two because mm -hmm. Bear. Uh, whenever another bear enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Put two plus one plus one counters on target bear or... Target bear you control fights target creature you don't control. I this is the bear commander. This is this is the bear commander, absolutely. Yeah. And I have I have a friend uh, who's made an Iula, and my only issue is that they made it before I did because <laughs> I love this bear. <laughs> this is a very powerful bear tribal commander as far as tribal commanders go. It's it makes any bear tribal deck better. Mm-hmm. If it's the, not a I, uh, bear tribal deck, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no. At that point, you you better have a whole bunch of there's, stuff that turns everything into bears. There's only uh, one way uh, you can build her, and that's bear tribal, really. Right. Which I get it, and you know, it's it's the whole bears tribe thing. I, I I'm glad that there was finally a leader. Um, of course, uh, I also don't have it a problem with the idea of somebody sitting down playing their deck and everybody at the table knowing exactly what it's going to do, and going. All right, that's not terrifying. It's fun, and the the idea of literally Mama Bear having another bear enter the battlefield and saying, "Great, I can't decide. Should I get stronger or punch something?" Hmm. I love that. Mike, there's one more bear I see on this list. You want to tell us about that one? Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about a another uh, two two for two mana. Um, how about Grenzo, Havoc Razor? Interesting. Uh, so. This is a legendary creature, Goblin Rogue. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, choose one. Go target creature that player controls. Pretty good. Great. Ag 
exile the top card of that player's library until end of turn. You may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. It's a very um, aggressive card. It really is. This is this is another one of those. It's weird when I see Goblin Tribal. I don't see think as much Krenko. Renzo. Well, I think of Krenko. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I think of a lot of other goblins in different forms before I think of Grenzo. And Grenzo just seems like it would be fun to just, I am going to flood the board with as many 1-1 one, one hasty creatures as I right. possibly can. And I just want to cast all of your stuff. He's a goblin, but this need not be a goblin deck. Right. It, it's... It, it, well, frankly, it can it be... Could be. In, in any deck where you can either make things unblockable or you're going to attack with lots of stuff, mm -hmm. Renzo's fun. Extra combat deck. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. There you go. Gross. I'm uncomfortable. All right. Grenzo's fun. Move on. You made me so sad. So here's one that uh, is of a type that is not extremely common. This is a group slug commander. Mm -hmm. Rankle, master of pranks. Yeah. For two black black, it's a legendary creature, fairy rogue, with flying and haste. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever Rankle deals combat damage to a player, choose any number. Each player discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. Bingo. Yep. You are always going to just be putting the screws to the table at every opportunity. Rankle seems like a card where if it's your commander, there even if you're not the biggest threat on board, there's a decent chance that you're going to get hated on. Yeah. Just because of... Rips looks rough. It, it can be, but just the idea of the best case scenario is I'm going to get hit by this thing or somebody's going to get hit by this thing. I'll lose a life and draw a card, but that's probably not what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. That's the way I'd do it. That's the way you do it, but you're also building this as a specifically a group slug commander at that point. Right. Whereas I think a lot of people that play Rankle are doing a lot of the mono black control and diminish mm -hmm. strategy where it's i'm gonna have enough creatures to keep on board to where rankle still gets to exist i'm going to eliminate cards from everybody's hand and have some kind of recursion or some kind of engine where i can keep reusing those cards as i see fit and everybody else isn't necessarily prepared for it and rankle is very powerful <laughs> it, it can be it can be a problem pop on that helm of the host give it some double strike here uh, we go gross okay. Mike how about uh, an even more disgusting value commander coma cosmos yeah. serpent three double green double blue that's seven mana for a legendary creature serpent six six this spell can't be countered it's pretty good Wow. At the beginning of each upkeep, Mike, each upkeep, you uh -huh. know what that means. That's my turn, your turn, everyone else's turns, every player's turn. Create a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token named uh -huh. Coma's Coil. And then the activated ability, sacrifice another serpent. Choose one. First option, tap target permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. Brutal. You can tap down lands, tap down creatures, planeswalkers. This is disgusting. Option two, Coma Cosmo Serpent gains indestructible until end of turn. Holy smokes, Mike. This thing sticks around and it makes other things sad. This is and absurdly high value. Even even if So I have a question for you. Yeah. If Coma Cosmo Serpent was a 7-mana creature that's a 6-6 six, six, and said this spell can't be countered, at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token that's named Coma's Coil. If that was the entire card, this would still be pretty good. Yeah, it would definitely be a lot more casual, but yeah. I would I would play it. Yeah, it would. Yeah. it might not be your commander anymore. Right. But that, it's playable. That would be what Coma would say five years ago. Right. Yeah. And especially if it wasn't in Simic, because Simic right. has to be powered to heck. If this was um, white and green. Yeah. Yeah. That would that would actually make sense to me. Um, yeah. However, just... 
You just have this activated ability that really doesn't need to be there. It's coma is its own engine. It, it makes really the resources really quickly, by the way. It's making four every go around the turn in a pot of four. Mm -hmm. And then you can save these up. You can attack with them. You can sacrifice them. And even if you have nothing else that's happening on board, coma itself can sacrifice them for value. Yeah. I just, this, this card is nuts. It's one of the ones that it, I feel like there's at least you you've been playing magic far longer than me. So maybe I'm, I'm just not privy to it. It seems like the last few sets, there's been at least like two or three cards that have been, wait, what? And I don't know if it's always been like that, but coma when it came out was the what card for me. <laughs> Mike, it's been like that for many years now, but okay. it wasn't, always like that before my right. time uh they wizards of the coast r d took great pains in most cases to make sure that they weren't printing ridiculously powerful cards now obviously there are exceptions a lot of the cards in alpha beta are absurdly strong they didn't really know what they were doing sure uh mirrodin is a notable exception they kind of played fast and loose with artifacts but then starting in like 2015 around 2016 they really started to go off the rails with just these very high power cards and ever since then i think there's been at least one ban every single year mike i don't somebody can correct me on that but once upon a time they would have stretches of years with no bans for hmm. years and years and years i mean don't get me wrong it's a fun card it's, it's Simic just... just gets a disgusting amount of value and it hurts my soul because Simic is great. It's yeah. it's arguably the most powerful color combo in Commander. It's probably the most color combination in any format where Simic is able to see play. Sure. And the value is always so absurdly high. Mm -hmm. It's just it's... painful. We're going to have to do a full-fledged episode about power creep and just like, hey, yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Um, but before that, how about we talk about some, well, you know, let's get off of Simic. Let's go on to a four-color commander here. Um, and something that's totally fair and doesn't ruin anybody's day or anybody's life. Uh, Brea, Ethereum Shaper. Uh, this is white, blue, black, red, four mana for a 4-4 four, four legendary artifact creature, human, which... Again, that still messes with me a little bit. Uh, when Brea, Ethereum Shaper, enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one blue Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. Okay. Then we get into the options. For two generic mana and sacrifice two artifacts, choose one. Brea deals three damage to target player or planeswalker. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn, or you gain five life. Yep. None of those off of the top of their head. No, none of those abilities off the top of my head are terrible. They're not like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. But when it's pay two mana and sacrifice two artifacts to do stuff, artifacts are really good about having other artifacts. And to be able to do a lot of these in a synergy and build off of each other. And Brea is just one of those decks that it doesn't ever seem to me like Brea is the biggest cause of concern. It's the mm -hmm. everything else. And then Brea comes out of nowhere and says, oh, by the way, that thing's got minus four, minus four, and it's gone. She's like a Voltaic key. She just yeah. makes the rest of the deck function in a very oppressive way. And you can build the deck around her. You could blink her. You can. You could do this blinking with Deadeye Navigator, and then mm -hmm. maybe you have... Uh, maybe not Urza, but some other effect that lets your artifacts tap for mana. And sure. voila, you're immediately paying two to make two creatures that tap for mana that you can either sacrifice for value or blinker again. Right. And there's the value and the options for her. This is any kind of artifact deck that you want. There are a lot it's... of different artifact decks that can go in here. This is the second most popular uh, four-color commander, I think, maybe the third most after Atraxa. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's not that's not especially surprising. Um, <laughs> I, I I gotta ask, is is artifact and and I'm ask I understand I'm I'm fully asking this to somebody who has an Emrakul deck. Mm -hmm. 
Is artifact synergy like one of the top three most powerful things that you can do in EDH and we just don't talk about it enough? I would say, yeah, at the top of EDH, you have, as far as art of, not artifact decks, as far as archetypes of decks, lands decks and artifact decks are two of the most powerful ones. I wouldn't say they're one and two necessarily, but... But they're up there. Lands decks specifically because it's very taboo to blow players' lands, and it's not very taboo to ramp a bunch of lands. So lands decks just will explode in value and no one can do a damn thing about it. Um, artifact decks because artifacts just have an absurd amount of value. They just do. Artifacts have great synergy. Artifacts have great mana costs. You never, you seldom need to fix. There are colored artifacts, but you seldom need to fix for them reanimating them is easy uh they like to tap and untap each other mike artifact decks just kind of work it's like putting gears together and like oh look it's turning it's a machine now yeah no that's that's a very good way of putting it and when it when it does turn it it turns oh my gosh you don't like artifact decks seem complicated but really it's just oh look (laughs) oops all artifacts yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay so we got Natalia, and we got Usha, Ulushat, Ulusht. Ulasht, the hate Ulasht. seed. Well, you tell you what, you're definitely going to be the one talking about them because we've already, we, we, we have a long history of me not being able to pronounce the name of cards. Okay, Ulasht, so, the hate seed, <laughs> is a very gruel commander. Uh-huh. Uh, two red green for a legendary creature, Hellion Hydra, 0-0. Zero, zero. Ulasht, the hate seed, ETBs with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each other red creature you control and a plus one, plus one counter on it for each other green creature you control. So you want to cast this uh, late Mm -hmm. and then it enters with a ton of counters because you have a big board. Activated ability, pay one and remove a plus one, plus one counter from Ulasht. Choose one. Option one, Ulasht deals one damage to target creature. Option two, create a one, one green sapperling creature token. Yikes. Um, yeah, so I mean, being able to cast this, you have a big board, or maybe really any size board, it's going to enter with some counters, you're going to pay one to make a token. Paying one to make a 1-1 one, one token is phenomenal value, especially yeah. like, hey, I didn't have anything to do on my turn, I'm just going to save my mana until the end step before my turn, make a mm-hmm. bunch of tokens, they have pseudo haste, here we go, and... <laughs> My commander dies, I recast it, and because I made a bunch of sapperlings, now it's it has more counters. Yeah. So I this is definitely not like the Hydra Commander, but this is a very interesting plus one plus one counter grill commander. Oh, sure. I mean, it, it just like oozes like wow, when this comes out, like you don't want that to happen. It's gonna be huge, and then yeah. it's gonna make a bunch of tokens. Yeah. It's whew. Um, any, anytime something has the ability one, sometimes even two, any, anytime it's a, Hey, make some more stuff Mm -hmm. on a commander that also cares about other things being on the board. Usually that's going to be a little bit of a problem. (laughs) Um, and the, oh my gosh, Ulash is very good. Now, speaking of cards that are not very good, we have one last commander, Mike. This what are you is... talking about? We saved the no. strongest for last. We, we saved the whitest card for last. That's Italia, true. and not Itali. No. This is Italia with an A. Samite Master. Mm-hmm. Three white white for a legendary creature, human cleric. Pay X and tap. Choose one. Spend only white mana on X. Prevent the next X damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn... Or you gain X life. She's a 2-3. Okay. Mike, ugh, this is garbage. What, yeah. what is this? It's from Invasion Block. It's 75 cents. What are yeah. we going to talk about here? This is... Y- this is proof out... that... It's proof that white didn't used to be more powerful than it currently is, necessarily. Yeah. You, you also left out the worst part about it that says you can only spend X mana. Or white mana on X. I did actually say that part. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I heard just uh, gain X life. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this is not good. Not good. Uh, this this goes back to what is it? Healing self. Uh, yeah. Prevent the next three damage that would be dealt to uh, to target creature. 
here's the thing. If this was a... I keep wanting to say three mana. No. But even then, no. still not very good for a two, three. If this was a two mana creature... Okay. No. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shoot the moon for it or anything, but like, okay, fine. It's a five mana creature. There are like twenty other mono white life gain commanders that you could run before this. I do, uh, like, Also preventing I, my, damage to be dealt to creatures is not good at all. No. If I would if this even if it just said prevent the next X damage that would be dealt this turn. Okay. That's something. I could at least do something with that. But uh-uh. Delta creature or gaining life, spend mm-hmm. only white mana. No, nope, nope, nope. You notice that for like any X spell that involves gaining life, um, actually we skipped over this one, but Heliod's intervention, the second mm-hmm. mode is you gain twice X life. Right. Because it's an X spell. And, and I'm telling you right now, nobody is trying to spend a number of mana, an amount of mana equal to the amount of life they're gaining. That is bad. Yeah. That's very bad. And double it's, is not much better. Nope. It's it's truly not. And it it's it's a shame. But uh what a I mean, shame, if what a nothing shame. else. Right. If nothing else, we sometimes we just have to, you know, reiterate that's like, hey. Now Mike, I, help. <laughs> I do have an ooh can I see that. But yeah. it's it doesn't really follow the rules because it's in too many decks, but I'm willing to bet you've probably heard of it. I don't think very many of our listeners will have heard of it. Sure. Should we should we do it? Yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, while I pull it up here, you want to tell them where they can buy these cards we've been talking about? Absolutely, I can. So, if you're interested in any of these cards, including Atalia, Samet, Master, I, I which, wouldn't buy that one. By though. the way, why? No. Uh, but if you're interested in any of these cards, decks, boxes, sleeves, anything along those lines, you can support us by going to bitly slash edh underscore social. We're going to have a link in the show notes. There you can go to TCG Player. It's our affiliate link to where you're going to be able to buy all of the cards, all of the everything that you would want for your commander experience. And you're going to help us out in the in the same process. So go ahead and check that out. And Alex, why don't you tell them about a card that they might want to pick up? All right, Mike. Now, this is a pretty niche card. Sure. However, it, it does break the rules. This card is in 3,100 decks. Okay. However, that's only 1% of 550,000 decks because I mean, this is a colorless is spell. Yeah. And a colorless spell can go in any deck. Warping sure. Whale. Yeah. Warping Whale is one and colorless for an instant. Choose one. Either exile target creature with power or toughness, one or less. Counter target sorcery spell. Ding, ding, ding. Or, worst case scenario, create a 1-1 colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token with sacrifice this creature at colorless. Mike, this is just, it's good value for two men. I'll tell you that right now. (laughs) What is, (laughs) there are... Some very, very powerful sorceries in this game. Oh, sure. And we talked about some of them today. And I'll tell you right now, we've talked about it in uh, in my Emrakul deck tech. Nobody in their right mind expects you to counterspell anything in a colorless deck. They just yep. will never see it coming. And it's at the going rate for a counterspell. Two mana, there you go. Yeah, that's that's actually the surprising part about it. Because most counterspells... If they that are modal. if they have well, I'm just, most counter spells that are modal or yeah. have a option, they're usually going to be up priced. Mm-hmm. Most colorless spells are up priced, but instead of increasing the price, what they did is decrease the value. It can only yes. counter one kind of spell. Yeah. However, that kind of spell is a really good kind of spell to counter. That is that is true. <laughs> so good pick on that, All um, right. Alex. I I think. I think we're in agreement here um, that these modal spells, these choose spells, these Mm -hmm. options in your hand that are, it almost feels like I've I've got a hand of seven cards, but I've got one of these in my hand. Yeah. It feels like I've got like eight, nine, ten cards. Exactly. That's exactly what you have. You're increasing the total number of cards Mm -hmm. that you're running in your deck, just like running a tutor is decreasing the number of cards you have in your deck, making it more right. consistent. This is giving you more options. And 
obviously this is a lot of these are not extremely exciting because we're talking about splitting the value of your meta cost up among these different options. Mm -hmm. Not all of them are on rates. In fact, many aren't. But at the same time, we do see some of these effects like uh, Golgari Charm and and like Rakdos Charm and Coma the Sea Serpent and Austere Command, where they are exciting and they Mm -hmm. do have the value that you would expect at that mana cost, but they're simply more flexible than your average card. And yeah. Honestly, I think we could all uh, could all do to take another look at these. Oh yeah, no, it, it, there's. I guarantee, from the ones that we talked about, and even the hundreds that we haven't, there everybody are hundreds, who's yeah. everybody who's listening to this uh, podcast right now, I guarantee that you've got a card in your deck that does what one of these aims to do more times than not, that costs one less mana. So. Are you willing to pay one more mana to have more options when you're playing? That's something you got to think about. And frankly, I I don't know why not. I think these are good. Uh, what our dear friend Dana Roach over at CMDR Central and ADH Rec likes to mm-hmm. call homework cards. Yeah. Uh, these are cards that like, oh, well, they're not very flashy, so you're not really inspired. You're not itching to put them in your deck. However, they may improve your deck. So why don't you go through... And uh, maybe you can, Mike, you can even put in a uh, link to our Scryfall search here in, Absolutely. Our, in our show notes that will help our players find these modal spells. I've, I've written a, a simple regex pattern that finds all of the different modal spells. And you can look through, you can find your colors, and maybe you'll be surprised. Yeah. And you know what? Worst case scenario, if you're not surprised, all it means is that you know that your deck is as tuned as you'd like it to be. Hell yeah. There's nothing wrong with being sure. Alex, thanks for meeting with me this week. It's um, always a pleasure, Mike. Uh, oh, that's so nice to hear. Where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Labramedic, L-A-P-P-E-R-M-E-D-I-C, or you can email me directly at alex at edhrec.com. Everyone, we have a Discord, and in the show notes is the Discord link. If you want to come in there, chat with us, suggest some, ooh, can I see that cards that you don't see anybody playing that you think deserve a fair shake, maybe put a spotlight on them. Let us know. You can also go in there and ask our honorable Judge Alex a question. Uh, As far as everything else, you can follow us on Twitter at EDH underscore social or email us at the social contract EDH at gmail.com. It was a pleasure talking to you all. We'll talk to you soon.